Welcome back and thank you very much for staying with us. This is We on Wild is One. We are counting minutes now until the launch of the Aditya L1 to the Sun. This is live in Sri Harikota where the PSLV XL rocket, which is carrying the Aditya L1, will be ready to blast off and get closer to the sun. So this is another milestone for India. Just uh, a month after launching the Chandrayaan 3, now we have Aditya L1, which is going to observe and study the sun and the sun rays and the importance it has on climate change because most climate enthusiasts and also environmentalists are keen on this mission because it will sort of give the answers as to the recent heat waves that we've been uh, experiencing in Europe, the United States, in Asia and some parts of Africa. As you can see on your screen, this again is live in Sri Harikota where enthusiasts, space enthusiasts for that matter, are gearing up for the launch of Aditya L1 to the sun. Now we'll be saying India is closer to the sun in a few minutes from now. Air traffic controller or Mosam Vibhaki and Anumati Viprat Kija Chuki here, Vibin Uchaiper, Vayogati, Mapli. Professor Arup Das Gupta is a former deputy director of ISRO, is now joining us again from Ahmedabad, India. Professor, looking at this launch, uh, again, I'll ask you. What does this mission mean for you and mean for ISRO? Uh, for ISRO, this is a very important mission. Uh, as you know, ISRO has been earlier mainly uh, working on uh, satellites uh, meant for uh, human development, like uh, satellite communications for education and, uh, and uh, remote sensing of the Earth. Uh, and also meteorological uh, studies, but may, these are all related to activities happening on the Earth. But there is a whole group of scientists uh, who are also interested in looking at what's happening in the uh, uh, in, in the space, and uh, therefore uh, ISRO has started looking at some of these uh, activities, uh, some of these scientific payloads, uh, which can then uh, provide more information. Uh, mm -hmm. to these scientists, not only about the Earth, but about the various space objects. And that's why we went in for a satellite called AstroSat, which is still alive. We went in for a um, uh, for a mission to uh, Mars, which right. we call Mangalyaan. We've uh, gone to the moon. And uh, all these missions are actually feeding in a huge amount of data for uh, scientists who are looking at the space and how it is evolving. So it is very important and it is one of those very important activities of this show. Professor, Professor, Professor Arup, we are counting now less than three minutes. So I would urge you to be a little bit brief because I don't want to cut you short, but talking about the technicalities of this uh, mission, um, how long does it take to communicate with a craft that is 1.5 million kilometers away from the Earth. Oh, uh, it will take a long time. Eh? You will have to count it in uh, several uh, seconds. In fact, maybe even in, uh, in minutes. Right. Because it's 1.5 million kilometers away. So how does uh, ISRO track this Aditya craft that is to be 1.5 million kilometers away from the Earth? We have a uh, we have a deep uh, deep space uh, uh, earth station at Bailalu, and uh, we also have arrangement with a lot of uh, countries who have these kind of facilities, and we work in a cooperative arrangement with them so that we are always linked to the satellite. Eric, Professor Rup, um, missions to study the sun are undertaken predominantly by NASA, European Space Agency. Why? Well, uh, even China and Japan have also sent in uh, solar uh, 
uh, satellites for solar observation. So India is just joining the same club. Um, why, again, the answer is the same. We need to understand more about the space uh, objects and in particular the sun, uh, which gives us the uh, wherewithal of life. Okay. Professor Arup Das Gupta is a former deputy director of ISRO from Ahmedabad. Professor Arup, stay with me because it's now under 40 seconds until the launch. We'll go live to Sri Harikota and listen in. T minus one minute and counting. Minus 55 seconds. All stops are on. Minus 50 seconds. All seconds are sound. So, we are going to be able to do this. Minus 40 seconds. Promotion is going to be open. Minus 35 seconds. Minus 30 seconds. Real time programs activated. Minus 25 seconds. PS2 VSPP open. Minus 20 seconds. PS1 ignition arm is on. Minus 15 seconds. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, 0. Plus 5 seconds. Lift off normal. P1 tracking. P3 tracking. Plus Magnificent lift off of PSLV C57 with Aditya L1 on board. Plus 15 seconds. PSLV C57 ka safal uthapan aur iske saath pratham bhartiya saur antariksh yaan nikal chuka hai sur ke tej se vijyan ko prakash karne. Iske saath hi ek aur kadam hai antar grahiya safar mein bharat ki uphasthiti siddh karne ka. Aap dekh rahe hai PSLV C57. Pratham charan puri tarah samanya. The rocket flying forth. Following nominal trajectory and developing nominal thirst, the bright fumes against a clear midday sky. A rocket launch is more than just a sight to behold. The roaring sound and the vibrations that we can feel here. Adding to this, the thrill are just amazing. Ground lit and air lit strap ons operating together with the first stage, S139. Ground lit strap on separated. जैसा कि निर्धारित है ग्राउंड लेड स्ट्रपॉन को सेपरेट कर दिया गया है और प्रथम चरण का निष्पादन सामान्य है इस घटनाक्रम में अगला एयर लेड स्ट्रपॉन को यान से पृथक कर दिया जाएगा एयर लेड स्ट्रपॉन सेपरेटेड जी हां इसकी भी पुष्टि हो गई है स्ट्रपॉन को सफलतापूर्वक पृथक कर दिया गया है वी आर 100 सेकंड्स पास्ट द लॉन्च टाइम द ग्राउंड लेड एंड एयर लेड स्ट्रपॉन्स हैव बीन सेपरेटेड S-139 motor still thrusting. S-139, 110 seconds of the Prajulan Kaal, it has been completed. The Charan, which is the Charan Lodak Paradhari Charan, has started the Prajulan and has been doing it in the Vartaman. Second stage performance normal. The launch vehicle has been at an altitude of 73 kilometers. First stage has been separated, second stage has begun its operation and the closed loop guidance has been initiated. According to the announcement by Range Operations Director, PS2 is developing nominal thrust. PS2 is a very good thing. It is a Vikas engine that is a very good thing. It is a very good thing. और इसका प्रज्वलन काल लगभग 150 सेकंड का होगा। शार एंड पोर्ट ब्लेस ट्रैकिंग स्टेशंस प्रेजेंटली एक्वायर्ड। एंड देयर यू गो आदित्या एल वन इज ऑन इट्स वे टू द सन आफ्टर अ सक्सेसफुल ब्लास्ट ऑफ फ्रॉम द पीएसएलवी एक्सएल रॉकेट व्हिच इज कारिंग द आदित्या एल वन it has blasted off to the sun and the experiments and the observations 
begin. So we are still observing as this rocket goes to space in a matter of uh, minutes now. I think we're in the third phase. This is, yes, indeed, that's the third stage of the rocket launch until the Aditya L1 is released to space and it starts orbiting the sun and observing the sun. Professor Arup Dasgupta, as a former deputy director of ISRO, he's still with us. Professor, the launch has happened. What next? Well, we have to wait because uh, this is a fairly complicated launch. Uh, we, we initially, the uh, satellite will go around the Earth in a highly elliptic orbit, much like what happened in Mangalyaan as well as Chandrayaan 1, 2, and 3, mm -hmm. uh, because it has to pick up speed. Right. Uh, so as it goes around the Earth, when it reaches the nearest part of the Earth, uh, uh, which is the perigee, uh, the motor will be fired and uh, their orbit will be further raised until in this particular case, it moves out of the sphere of influence of the Earth. So it is called the SOI, mm -hmm. uh, the, uh, the sphere of influence. And then it will be heading towards the sun. And then through a very complicated set of maneuvers, right. it's not going to go into, the, into an orbit right around the sun, but it will actually come to a position called the L1, right. where it will be located in a what is called as a halo orbit. So it will be going around the sun, so it, will, uh, so it will always be between the Earth and the Sun, but it will be in a very small orbit called the halo orbit around this point, which is called the Lagrange point one. Eric? Professor Arup, we are seeing scientists keenly observing the launch. Probably you can tell us the crucial stages of this launch. And uh, I can see we have uh, stage one. How, how many stages are there? And what's the crucial stage of this launch? Well, all stages are crucial, uh, and uh, they, uh, currently what I see is that the fourth stage is uh, mm -hmm. uh, firing. So the fourth stage will fire twice. There are two coasting uh, phases also. Uh, uh, so the fourth stage will uh, will fire once uh, for a length of time, and then it will allow the uh, whole system to coast for. Uh, uh, period of time and then again it will switch uh, and again it will uh, power on mm -hmm. and once it powers on and uh, finish and uh, attains the velocity which is required uh, it will shut down and separate from the uh, from the payload so and the payload will be on its own after the payload also has its own rocket motor for further use later on in the journey and this journey is going to take something like four months yeah a hundred days. A hundred days, mm -hmm. uh, out of which uh, it will be around the Earth for five days. And then uh, after the fifth day, most probably it will leave the sphere of influence of the Earth and then be on its own, on its way to the sun. Eric? Professor, why can't solar studies be done from Earth itself? Why do we have to go closer to the sun to find out? Because the Earth uh, has an atmosphere and that atmosphere actually absorbs uh, many of the solar radiations. Mm -hmm. Earth also has a, uh, a magnetic field, and the magnetic field actually deflects away many of the radiations which are coming from the sun, you know, the solar wind. Mm -hmm. So therefore, you need to be away from the Earth's atmosphere and magnetic uh, influence to be able to observe the sun better. Eric? Professor Arup, uh, just for the benefit of our viewers, now that this launch has happened, when do we know that it is indeed a success? Or how do we know that it is indeed a success? Well, uh, it has to uh, achieve its position at the Lagrange point, and then, it, uh, and then its uh, sensors will be switched on one by one. Mm -hmm. The data will be coming back to Earth, and then from then we will know whether the sensors have survived this uh, rather long journey mm -hmm. and uh, what the results we'll be getting from the sun we'll be able to understand that everything is fine 
and the mission is a success in putting the satellite into the into the desired position. Right. Uh, the analysis of the data will take its own time. So, as you said, that the satellite will have something like about five years, five to eight years of life. Mm. So that's the time that you require to be able to analyze the data. Eric. All right. I've been talking to Professor Arup Das Gupta former Deputy Director of ISRO, live from Ahmedabad. Professor, thank you very much for your time and for being with me in this another historic day for India today. Thank you. All right, you're watching We On World is One, another success. We On is now available in your country. Download the app now and get all the news on the move.